due by midnight on Wednesday. Okay, so we finished up our line art and we tried it in a few different ways, right? And my favorite was using a blob brush in Illustrator with a fixed weight just for this particular assignment, this drawing. And so I get this really clean vector line art. No matter how much I zoom in, it's perfectly clean. But all line art is, is clean black outline that you can color behind. I could even take this, which was just made from the, the pencil sketch, and then scanned in. And I could try to work with this to make it clean line art within Photoshop. So here it is. How can I make this even better? Well, the first thing I want to make sure is that my line art is a high enough resolution. So right now, this is just 8 by 8 by 72 by screen resolution. So I want to force that up to 10 inches by 10 inches by 350. That's our minimum for this spot illustration. And because it's increasing the pixels so much, you can see that it's going to make them really kind of soft and blurry at the edges. So how can I smooth that out? Well, there are a few tricks. I can duplicate it. Command J on a Mac in Photoshop, Control J in PhotoP. And then I can actually blur it a little bit. Go to Filter, and then the only filter we ever use consistently, Gaussian Blur. And what this will do is it will take the line art on our copy and it will blur it out. And we can decide how much. It's basically going to thicken and soften our lines. Okay. Now blurry isn't what we want. We want clean, sharp line art, but we want it smoother. So now what I do is I duplicate that, the blurred, and then I set that to multiply. So it lets all the darks through, right? And then I duplicate that, and duplicate that, and duplicate that. And that gives me kind of smoother, thicker, cleaner line art. Is it as clean as this? What's created in a vector program? No, not at all. But now this will get me closer. Right, so what can I do then? Then I can merge them all together or flatten the image. Right, and then I can go to levels and I can adjust the highlights and clean it up, and I won't get that same kind of blobbiness. You know, it does a pretty good job, and this was just from a pencil sketch, right? So it does a pretty good job of imitating ink. And it's better than nothing. And then, of course, I can use my eraser and really clean it up. But however you can get to clean line art, this is how you want to set it up. You want to set it up so it's at least 10 inches by 10 inches by 350. Right? And you want to set it up so it's as clean as possible. So if it still looks blurry, you can go to filter and you can even, because it's just black and white, you can go to smart sharpen. And after you've used Gaussian blur to help sharpen it, you can actually, or to help soften it, you can actually use smart sharpen. Uh, to clean it up. There we go, we're getting there. And all Sharpen does is it intensifies the contrast at the edges. And you can do all of that in Photo P as well, right? So we need this. We need just a black and white image that's clean.
And you can always, you know, just paint it yourself and then turn off the sketch behind it. If you're at the right resolution, that gives you nice clean work. Okay, but now I am going to open up a new Photoshop file because now I'm going to color it. And I want it to be 10 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. And this will be my color spot illustration. We are coloring our line art within a raster program so that we can have all those kind of variations of light and dark and be a little bit more spontaneous than if we tried to color it within a vector program. So I've created my canvas. It's 10 by 10 inches by 350. Now I can drag and drop my EPS file into it and it will come in as a smart object. And I can make it as large or as small as I want on there, but and then because it's an EPS, it will be a raster image that's pixel based, but it will adapt to whatever the environment is. So if as long as I leave it as a vector, just like a smart object um, shape tool that we would use in Photoshop, it will always be perfectly clean no matter what the resolution. Okay, so now I have two distinct layers, right? I have my line art, which I want to lock, and I have my background, which I'm going to rename blank white. And by renaming your background layer blank white, it will also allow you to lock it permanently. So this is basically your white bread for your coloring sandwich. And your black line work is, is like your, your wheat bread, right? So we have our, our white bread and our wheat bread or our black bread. All the colors go in between these two. So we're going to make a new layer and we're going to call it flat. And flat local color is just the color the thing is, no matter the lighting condition. So the first flat local color I know about is the red. And if I have something, an exemplar to follow, like the painting I did, this kind of shows me my flat local colors, right? The red goes there, goes there, and it's probably going to go on some of these. So on my flat local color, I could just use a brush at 100% opacity, 100% flow. I can use it pretty hard edged. And then I can just choose the color in my foreground color selector and just choose red and then just start painting. And that can work just fine, especially if I have a tablet or I can be pretty controlled. But it's important that it's on a separate layer, right? What's an easier way to do it? The problem with freehanding your coloring is then you could very easily go outside of the, the lines, you know, just like a coloring book. So is there a way to kind of, and there is, right? We can simply, if I erase this, what we can do, even though it's locked, is we can go to our vector lines and we can use our magic wand and we can have contiguous on at 32, and I can select the empty spaces that I want to fill. So everything I think should be red. So I've selected them all, and then I can move that selection down to my flat local color. And then I can just pick a red. And then I can use the paint bucket tool and just drop it in. Now that works if the shapes are completely contained, right? 
but I can also draw a shape with my lasso and then use the paint bucket tool and drop it in. So there's lots of ways you can get your flat color down besides just using a paintbrush. And you're free to experiment with that. So this is a stage I call, um, so that it's very memorable, I call it the kill whitey stage because I want to get rid of all the white that's not necessary, right? And one way to, to make it easier to see what I'm coloring and what still needs to be colored is I'll make a duplicate of the blank white layer and I'll make it gray instead. So blank gray. And so then I go to that layer, I say edit fill with 50% gray. And then I'll lock that. And then this makes it clear where I want light shapes and dark shapes. So looking at my color exemplar, I have kind of an off-white for most of it. So if I just keep it simple, and I might as well, let me choose an off-white color. Or the creamy white. Let me use my magic wand. And on my, my line art layer, I'll make it a little bit more sophisticated, but choose quite a few of these feathers to be that one creamy white. Right? And then I'm just going to use my paint bucket, and it won't let me, because I locked it, it won't let me paint it on my line art layer. So I have to go to my flat color layer and drop it in. Okay, now I'm going to pick a slightly different white. Oh no, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. So I want to do flat color. So if I'm really doing flat color, I need to do all of it the same everywhere. Wherever you have white feathers, you're going to do it this way. Okay, so I think that's all of it. So now I'm just going to drop that in, all the same flat color. Oh, but I missed these. All right, I don't think I missed anything there. And then the only flat color that's missing are the legs. And I did this intentionally so I can show you the problem with this method. So on this leg, that works great. I have to pick a yellow for the leg, so let me pick a yellow which I can do here, right? You can always modify. And then drop it in. But if I do that for this one, watch what happens. Then drop it in. Boom, that's a problem. So the reason that that's a problem is because my line art is open there. See, there's openings. So what do I need to do? I need to go to my flat color layer and I need to use my brush and just paint it in behind the outlines by hand. Now there's a few other ways if you want it really clean you can do this. One method is you can duplicate your line art and then rasterize it. And then with that rasterized line art, you can take your brush and just close it up where it's open like that, right? So that then you can select it all. And generally the way you do that is with a, a more elegant brush size.
like so.